like when you're injured, all you can think about is, oh, woe is me, woe is me, yeah. all that stuff. But uh, I can imagine how powerful it could be if you're injured, but you're still thinking about training. You're still thinking about firing muscle. Mm-hmm. May, like maybe you're not, you know, putting it under 100 pounds worth of stress, but in your mind, it's firing and just firing. Your body's moving with it. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a huge, um, you know, uh, thing that people should adopt or at least try the biggest thing that we can say is when you get injured uh one is obviously get imaging of some sort your medical doctor is not the end of your line and is not your answer yes your medical doctor can 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 pres- you know refer you over for uh, examining such as um you know any sort of uh mri mri uh, and then after that go i would go see an actual paramedical practitioner so such as a chiropractor, a, f- a massage therapist, and or a physiotherapist, because uh, they're the ones that will get that you know muscle and state back into condition. If they hook you up for a machine to a machine and like and for, for 15 minutes leave you in a room and come back and bill you, that's not a good place to be going. No. If they're using their hands on you and they're actually you know trying to see the range of motion, trying to see what you can and can't do, trying to see where your imbalances are actually hands-on approach then you're at a good start yes right uh next is what is their plan for you let's hear the plan out Mm -hmm. plan from where you are now to the day that you're going to get back into doing your workouts into doing your classes at 100 percent. this day you should be at 50 percent. you know week 12 you should be at 80 percent. week 10 you should be at 100 percent to go yeah there should be a plan in place that's a huge one Welcome back to Behind the Strength, where we help you with your health, wealth, and peace of mind. I'm Christian Alvarez. And I'm Carlo Balagasse. Welcome back, yo. Thank you to everybody who's uh, subscribed and who's referred us to other people, who's given us comments. Um, if you do want to get at us, you can find us at Strengthen You on Instagram, at S-T-R-E-N-G-T-H on Instagram. That's the best place to hit us up. Okay, so listen, let's get right to it. Today is a very, very important one to us, especially in this industry. It is how to maintain fitness and your mental actual fitness, which is a very important part, during a time of injury. Such this, a dra- oh. Such Listen. I hate when that happens. I've man. been injured in so many different ways. I know a lot of the guys here have and a lot of the girls here have who train hard. They go in. It's just... It goes from anywhere ranging from wear and tear, you know, nagging joints, nagging pain, aching muscles, to all the way through sprains and tears and, and, and you know, uh, breaks. Yeah. You know, it, it, it happens. It's part of the game. Dislocation. Dislocation. So, like, what, I mean, what is it that's going to take you through this? Not only will you keep your, you know, mental state at a, at a high state of energy, which is very, very hard to do when you go from very active to not at all. And what's going to keep you actually staying somewhat healthy or healthy during the time of injury? You know what's funny? A lot, there's certain types of people where injury is kind of a rite of passage. Yes. It's kind of like, yeah, yeah, it's it's like battle battle wounds. Power lifting and all that. Yeah, Muay Thai. Muay Thai. Muay Thai is huge. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, yeah. yeah, A lot lot of of martial um, arts. Martial arts. They're like, oh, yeah. Crossfit. Yeah, Crossfit. CrossFit's like you know, they they strap up everything. Yeah, they and tape up kind of everything. Like, oh, don't worry, I'm good, I'm good. You know, at, at what point is that dangerous? Do you think? I think it's very dangerous to have that mentality to begin with. Really, it's not a heroic thing. It it does mean yes, you've had some wear and tear over the years, but probably not from the pro- the right things that you'd want to be praised for. So it's definitely not a heroic thing. Injury is not a rite of passage. It 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 it's part of the you know being physically active in sports mm-hmm. uh in weightlifting and weight training uh even in just you know physical training in general right martial arts and injuries are very common a lot of those guys roll all day long injured they train hard injured right but so when you're talking about injury are we saying because okay let's classify you know, there's, injury there's there's pain like i have a little bit of wrist pain is that an injury? so let's 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 classify this stuff so there's your aches and pains which is like level one which okay, I can li- I can live with a little achy back, um, you know, a little sore elbow when it's wet outside, right? When it's damp yeah. outside, um, those are your regular aches and pains. Those like muscle pains, like when yes, yeah, some yeah. some or some form of um, arthritis or tendonitis mm-hmm. uh, may flare up. It also depends on if you eat, uh, you know, very high sugar foods, high salty foods, 
drink alcohol the next day, you're going to be a little lakey because you're swollen for sure. Okay. Right? That's, that, that's, that explains that, a lot. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of that stuff can actually be negated through your diet and proper practices of stretching and mobility work on a regular daily basis. I'm not talking about... Why do you, why do you think that is? Like you're, Well, well you know, your body's meant to move. Yeah. It's not meant to sit like this for eight hours. Think about how long we sit there for, how long you sit there for. Sometimes from like eight to eight, mm. eight to nine. Yeah. The body wasn't meant to sit there for that long, right? I know so, it sucks, man. Right? So, My I mean, hips but it's hurt but it's, now. Yeah. So, that's that's why. That's yeah. your body Sh- kind of. Sugary foods. Yeah. Aches and pains are your body's way of telling you that, hey, t- t- it's time to do something about this. It, well, that's very interesting. Like, the foods that you eat not only make you, you know, harm you f- the way you look, but physically, optimally, in terms of performance. Yes, 100%. Yeah. So, that's a, crazy. A big tactic, which I'll get to later, is in healing, you know, any torn muscles or any sort of. Uh, any tears or sprains and stuff like that, the food that you eat matters a lot during that period. Yeah. What you take in can heal you from when, you know, when they go to the doctor and they say anywhere from six to 12 weeks, that six to 12 week difference, the six week difference is based on how you treat that fucking injury. Mm. It's how you have, you know, the connection that you make to it mentally it's are you actually working on it physically? It's your, I heal? guess. Yeah. Yeah. Are you actually focused. physically focusing on yeah. this thing healing? Yeah. Right, Tim Grover, which is a great trainer, actually speaks well about a lot about that. A lot of high, like athletes, George St. Pierre. Right, the moment he tore his, uh, what was it, his Achilles, or no, it was his uh, MCL or ACL, um, and that's a career-ending injury, they say. So it, he just he literally focused on his thing, fibers, kind of putting it back together. That's a little bit more of a meditative thing. But it's it's really I, be, I don't know. I believe in that. I, stuff, no, no, I totally man. believe it. I, totally, I believe in that. I, I'm a hundred percent. Did you believe ever? It. Did you ever um, uh, read that? thing from joe dispensa what's that he's he's more he's very like he's a doctor he's a chiropractic doctor he was in a really bad accident Mm because he was doing a triathlon and a car or he was going through this um turn uh doing this triathlon and he he got fucking Mm -hmm. he got hit by Mm -hmm. a car or a bus or something like head on yeah and he was he was told he was gonna be paralyzed Mm -hmm. like paralyzed like done like or he's gonna be have difficulty walking forever and what he did, he said it was one of the most painful things ever. But what he said, he started thinking, he's like, is it possible for the body to heal itself? It, it is, right? very much so. And I don't know, okay, it's it's so hard to believe that this guy did this stuff, but he's still, he's walking now. It's, so what he did was, dude, for the, he didn't do anything. So he started focusing, because he couldn't really move. He sat there, or well, laid there. And he started focusing on small little things that, like, he's going through movements in his mind the whole time. And it was very painful, he said. So um, he was doing this practice on a day, like, on a daily, because he can do anything. So he's doing it daily, 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 focusing on moving, focusing on his uh, mind muscle connection, right? Really feeling that um, his, his um, nerves are coming back and him moving, him moving. And apparently, after six weeks, he was able to walk and then run and then get back in the fucking bike. And, it was insane. You know, you insane. know what, you know what that is. Eh? That's not a miracle. That's called basic neurology. That's what he was saying. It's like, it's there's no miracle to it. Yes, there's aspects of some, a lot of, a lot of aspects of belief, and 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 some form of uh, faith in something, and even including myself and my own healing power to be able to do that. Yeah. So there is two aspects of that. Uh, the second aspect is 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 more important. That's just basic neurology. Because we've been given, you know, a gift of you get up or you, you're born, you start to learn how to move and crawl and walk. You don't have to think about it. Yeah. You don't have to actually sit there and think about how to move my finger. Otherwise, this would take forever. Yeah. Yeah. It's but neuro- the, neuroplasticity, right? But like literally, it's, it's, what could, he did was he had to input his own algorithm again, to every yeah, movement. It's, again. It's, you're you're creating it those pathways again. That's all but it is. It's slow. It's so real. It's so... But, it's, but then once it gets going... It's it's like a pathway, right? It yeah. Like the yeah. energy just passes back all it and forth. Is. You got to build the road yeah, first. Yeah. Right? That's exactly. That's it. insane. That's all it is to me, though, man. He, but you have to, to actually doctors. constantly do it, like all day it's long. A practice. It's, it's a me- practice. It's, it's, it's a kind of like practice. even as small as you know, turning your eyes side to side or that's up what, and down exactly. and up and down. yeah, that's all it is. Because because what do we do as human beings? We're like, oh fuck, I can't walk, run, I can't play baseball anymore. No, but why don't you focus on moving your eye? That's why neurological path. Yeah. Right. But like you have to break that shit down to the its essence. Like, okay, what if I just move my finger? Focus on yeah, moving my finger exactly. first. That's oh, it. then, in, oh, I can move my one finger? Okay, let's yeah. do two now. Yeah. But yeah. a lot of people, the mental, the discipline. It's a discipline to do that it. it takes the mental to, capacity. To go through that shit because it's easier to give up. Like, I, fuck, okay, I'm going to be here now. Like, I'm, I'm not going to do anything. I, my, my doctor said, he said that he had to go to some crazy spinal surgery that won't even 
um, uh, guarantee him walking and shit like that. Like so painful. this is this is a big thing during injury, right? And and I mean, I was I was just speaking to somebody recently about this. It's all the naysayers out there. It's people who have gone through an injury and never had the mental capacity to get back to a certain state who never actually physically did anything about mm. it and and literally was defeated straight after an injury happened to them. The high school quarterback, you know, the one that basically uh, that, that peaked in high school. We know that peaked I in high school stories. We know a lot of those. By round crew. By round called out. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean... At that point, a lot of people don't get back to it, and they don't have, okay, and you know what? Back then, fair enough, the, the education wasn't there, but there's no excuse now. The Edu- education was there. The interest the wasn't there. The information is all here. The education was there. The interest wasn't the there. The interest wasn't there. So right? if you really, trust me, if you want to get back to a certain state, uh, st- state of health after an injury or after whatever, like you can get there. You yeah. really can, right? I've, 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 I've seen it over and over again. It's the people that get defeated mentally right on the onset of injury. That's like, oh, okay, I'm done. Yeah, right? the, the, and I'm the, giving the good, up. I'm not. The, the the good one is like, oh yeah, I got an inj- I got injured, blah blah, whatever, shoulder injury or something, and then my doctor said not to work out again. Yes. You fucking nuts. So here's the thing. Are you nuts? You need to work out. N- when you when you first get injured, okay, number one thing is you want to raise and elevate this whatever it is, whether it's an ankle, whether it's whatever it is, raise and elevate. Try try, try not to move it. Yeah. Don't be one of For those. For the first bit. Yeah. Like yeah. literally, as, as soon as it happens, don't be one of those heroes that seem like, oh, let me walk it off. Let me fucking, push it, you know, my hand. And it may feel good. It's just like a lot of people after a car accident. You oh, see yeah, that? Yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, I'm good, man. I'm good. I had a friend that recently did a fucking, what did he do? He did 10K the next day after a motorcycle accident. What? And he was, I'm good, guys. And I go, you're not feeling it. You're going to feel that in about a month from now. And for the rest of your life thereafter, that was a big mistake. Really? How mistake. do you do a 10K after a car accident? He's an actually he's a client here. He's a good friend of mine, and he's an idiot. What's his name? <laughs> tell me his name after. I will tell you his name. He's an idiot. Do I know him? Yeah, you do. Oh man, I know a lot of idiots though. Yeah, he got into a motorcycle accident. He came, he ran a 10K. And he's like, guys, this is so easy. I wonder oh, why all no. you guys. It's like, oh, you're oh, not even. Bad. You're not no. even. And he didn't want. It, so I tried to text. He didn't call me back because he knows I'm gonna yell at him. You're an idiot. So wait, did he actually do the run after? He felt good after though. The day after. He, anybody can say that they no, can. because isn't it like after a few hours you then you like as the yeah, adrenaline you start starts to tense to wear up. Yeah, you start to tense up. Or even just, sometimes after a couple a week, oh, because really? the shock lasts. It's that long. Right? Shock lasts. Wow. Right. I didn't know that. I thought it was shock like lasts. Few hours. You might feel a little bit of ache and pain, but you'll feel the real yeah. deal. Like like the you know what I mean the bruise the yeah. internal bruising. You'll feel that a week later. Especially it's kind like, of like listen, you got into a brawl in Muay, Muay Thai. Like when you get into like a serious brawl in the ring. You don't feel it the next day. You feel a little bit. A few yeah. days later, though, you're like, holy fuck. You should see the other guy, though. Yeah, That's right? Crazy. No, but it's true, though. That's when you're like, oh, man. Yeah, if I feel like this, that guy, that feels, guy feels beat feel up for, for sure. I should send him flowers. Right. So the first time, like when you first injure something, please do yourself a favor. Ice it and like actually raise it on something. You t- you tore your bicep, right? So Is that what happened? Yeah, you I tore it? Like, don't be like me and walk around for a day and a half with a torn bicep doing everything you were doing the day before. <laughs> But the funny thing is, you're like, oh yeah, I think I tore my bicep. Remember yeah, that? it was. It was. Re- I think I tore my bicep. So it was like, rearing to go. It, it was actually purple. We went. We went to go out to eat to dinner, and I was looking for something in my trunk. I was just shuffling through my gym bag, and I went to toss like a bunch of clothes and stuff aside, and I felt something like just pop, and I'm like, ah, it's not that. But like a pop, like a. I felt like, like a, like a, a roll up blind pop not, kind not of thing. Full roll. It just felt like like something like a. Pl- like, yeah, and I'm like, ah. But probably, no pain, uh, right? Uh, no pain. Uh, I, I was like, I pulled something. Yeah, so cool. it was like, almost like a pull. Yeah. Like, like, not like a, and you really don't know because it doesn't turn yellow and purple right then and then. Yeah. It was about the next day after when I was driving with Caesar. He goes, yo, your <laughs> arm's purple. Like, nah. Yeah, he's I like, remember He's like, that. it's not your tattoo. He goes, and he, pulled, he goes, yo, you tore a bicep. I go, nah. He goes, yo, you <laughs> tore a bicep. Look at that. These, you go let, get it checked out. And sure enough, it was a torn yeah, bicep. I remember. You're just like, yeah. So I walked around for a day and a half doing regular stuff with it. But I'm like, dude, it was yeah. purple. I remember that. I was yeah, like, I, I yeah, that doesn't look good, man. Yeah. That does not so, look good. So the good thing is I didn't tear it right off the bone. And okay. by the time I had realized it was about a week and a half later or a week later, by the time that process has started, and they go, you know what? If you tear your bicep, it should initially be like literally immediate. They should do surgery. Shit, really? 
Uh, if if it's not completely torn, yeah, they got to do it immediately if you want to do it. Otherwise, they said leave it. The healing process has already started. So if you don't do – okay, so if you do do it, you get full if functionality full, after? Yes. Oh, I was wow. lucky enough to have full range of motion, full strength. But then your bicep is a f- like Popeye's. It looks pretty fun. Like you have a peak now. Gosh, That's you, you should tear the other one. Yeah. <laughs> I've tried. <laughs> Trust me, I've tried. This podcast but, okay. is how to get a cool bicep. Okay, no. So, so here's the interesting fact. Like, but people I, think you tear something. They're they're in your mind. Never you're fucking back. going heavy. No. You're blah blah blah. But no. you just you're just you so, just whip the bag. So what happens usually when something goes a tendon, a ligament, um, a a muscle. Mm. First of all, for you to tear lig- ligaments and tendons means it was already ready to go. The reason we usually is because they're already swollen. They're already overstretched on a regular basis, over impacted. And again, not many people will go to like, you know, go and treat those things usually. Yeah. So with that, you got to remember how much load on an every single day basis, just on, you know, everyday movements, like a tendon actually has, mm. right? Because it's oh, very yeah. small and compared to like a bicep. Well, it, look at how much we pull. Like you pull exactly. when you pull, yeah. when you, there's a lot of strain, especially mm-hmm. what we do in a bicep. Right, Just and then on and then on a regular daily basis, you're using it to pull doors open, which yeah. you don't think is a lot until you have a torn bicep and yeah. then because flip it's, you. if it's fatigued and like all that. stuff. It's all that stuff. So you know that when usually when you tear something, it was it was rearing to go. It was a matter of time. There was already damage done there, some sort of inflammation. So so understand people that when you do something, it doesn't just go. It's because it was rearing to go over time or something was really tight inside there. So let's yeah. just say a torn bicep. I had really, really tight shoulders. Did you know that you had tight shoulders? Oh, uh, yeah. You, <laughs> okay. Fuck yeah. Okay, you did. okay. Of course. Of course. So you did what everybody does. Like, ah, so, it's you don't know. No, it's, it's what it is no matter what. So say if in five days a week of weight training, you're going to spend so about an hour of that and you're going to spend what five minutes to foam roll and to roll out on a ball and to stretch or 10 minutes yeah so that's where i learned to get smarter was to actually put more time into the prehab mm. which is a very important thing and hey we say it every day but we're a true believer in it because now we know you know instead of being of six to eight weeks of being out of commission i could spend the extra 10 minutes 20 minutes every single day to loosen up those areas that's going to possibly tear on me yeah i'm absolutely. very weary of that so like my rotator cuff, uh, rolling into the shoulder area. If I don't do that on a regular basis, I know it gets tight, right? I yeah. know it's going to get tight, and I know what happens after that. Where it gets tight for me, especially training here, this area. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of things that connect in that area. Um, huge trigger what's, what's, point. What's this again? Um, Brachial radialis. Yeah, brachial radialis. Yeah, yeah, there's a huge trigger Dude, point. I, like every time, Anytime you cramp clench up, or, you, up, yeah. or you, you type a lot, you're on the mouse. Up. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a huge thing, right? And then when you press on it, just hurts yeah yeah there's a lot of trigger points on that yeah um but yeah because remember uh, when i was pushing heavy i remember that was one of the worst that's a points huge thing the shoulders, yeah uh, the elbows. you know with with injury it's it's like we just mentioned it earlier it's about a lot of it is is going to be your mental attitude towards it. it really is because listen the way i see it i've torn so many things from two different quads to i just go in i go hard i've done this since i was 15 years old going yeah. hard Sure, you're going to expect to, to, to tear here, bruise there. No problem, right? Especially you're trying to be, uh, I'm doing things that, you know, a 17-year-old should be doing, mm. right? Um, no matter what, it's your attitude towards it. And, and when I say that, like, the moment something happens, how am I going to treat this? Yes, I got hurt during that last play, during that last whatever roll or round. Okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to sit out, put an ice pack on it, start the healing process already, right? Because what happens after that is you can either do – when your mental goals and you're emotional, now you're sending blockages through that area. Yeah. You really are. But if I deal with the immediate problem right away, okay, let's go ice this, and what are my next steps? What am I going to put in my body? I need to hydrate. Usually when you get hurt, you're dehydrated, right? Muscles are more flexible. Tendons are more flexible when it's well hydrated. Things are moving around in your body. So, so you're saying, stop, don't look at the problem. This, the problem you can't fix anymore. What's the solution? It's already done. What are that's, you going to do? Yeah, right away. Forward. Yeah, we so got to do I this ice this immediately. Yeah. I, I, like, so last time I tore my quad, right? And, and the biggest thing is, again, what are you doing right after the, 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 after the onset of pain and that injury? What are you doing? What are you putting in your body? What kind of nutrients are you putting in? Uh, what kind of you know, rebuilding of proteins are you doing? Branch chain amino acids are fantastic right after you tear something. Yeah, right yeah, after yeah. You, even after a workout. So supplement like not sup- supplementation, yes, and eating properly. Eating properly is a huge. It has eating to be properly. part of your three supplements I like to use. 
um, L-glutamine because L-glutamine directly repairs your 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 body's muscles even after a workout. Because when you're working out, you're micro tearing. Remember that mm-hmm. you really are. Yeah. Number two, uh, I like to use so on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. yeah regardless B- if you're BCAAs, branching amino acids. That is what your muscles are comprised of. Having a steady stream of that in your bloodstream is always you know a great thing when you're trying to recuperate and repair muscle or tissue of any sort. Um, and the last thing is, is, is some sort of, uh, calcium or glucosamine sulfate, you know, for the joints, for the bones, those things are, are, are really, really good. Mm-hmm. Right. So you, you know, you could do all four or you could do, you know, a combination, see what works for you. That really, I would do that on a regular basis just for injury prevention, but especially when you actually get injured, like loading that up is, is it going to be a great thing. Mm-hmm. Ice is going to be your friend. Anytime you have inflammation of any sort in the elbows, tennis. even after you just work out generally, say for those trainers who can relate, um, or trainees that can relate that have been training for years, exercising hard for years, they have regular aches and pains on their elbow, on the wrist. Do yourself a favor, take five minutes, soak them into a cold bath or something, a cold bucket, <laughs> or, hard. you know, even just, just an ice pack. Yeah. 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 It, it doesn't help to, or it doesn't hurt to actually, bring down the inflammation because those are areas that shouldn't have a bunch of blood flowing through them in that sense. Okay. Okay. So the question now, the big question is, is, can you train when you're injured? For example, okay. When you had your bicep, every fucking thing, every movement literally has some sort of bicep support. Yeah. Yes. Majority, right? Like, okay. You can't do a lot of back exercises. Right. But uh, there's so many other ways, other forms of training. Or exercise. Oh, okay. okay, so what? Like, so right. Okay, so, so for example. So let's, first let's of all, that. okay, let's okay, let's chase that. If this part of my body is not currently functional, yes, am I paralyzed? No. No. Right. Only this side is a crutch right now, and this yes. this quadrant of my body is. Sure. I would say the quadrant in general, because you're not going to try and do chest, because it all affects. Mm-hmm. So what I can do now is I've I've always done this, and this is a huge technique of mine. As I break my body down to quadrants. Cool. So instead of like day one, chest and back, day two, I'm going to go day one. We're going to train one side, right? Front and back or something or just all the front of one side, mm. all the back of one side. Then I'll train this side of my body in the third day. I'll break it down like that. Or I'll choose body weight exercises on my fourth day, which won't, you know, as opposed to getting up on my right side or I'd get up on my left side. You have to watch for the overuse of the other side though. Yes. Because usually what comes with injury, so say if like the lower back, right, your right side gets injured, you spend a couple of weeks getting it rehabbed and training because you've overused and over um, <clears throat> kind of uh, helped out with, with, with the left side so, for so long. Well, yeah, because you're overcompensated. Activate. Yeah, you're compensating now. You're overactivated, overcompensating with one side. That's going to start getting tight and tense. So you really have to watch that. Gotcha. But I would always break down when it comes to, say, an injury. Now, be reasonable, right? Because uh, Hey, I throw my bicep. When you're trying to go put your 45 pound plates on a on a leg press. You're still gonna start using just one side over and over again. So you gotta be mindful of that. You can't train probably the same intensity that you were. So if you were going 95 percent, usually you are 90 percent plus when you hurt yourself, right? Then you might have to train and dial back down to 70 percent or 65 percent, which isn't a bad thing. No, I don't think so. Because I, I think that one of the best things, and I think it's a blessing when you get hurt is you get to number one, rest your actual body. And how often do you do that? You get to rest your body. If you've been going hard to the gym, there's nothing wrong with taking some time off. Mm -hmm. But the reason why you get fat and lazy and sloppy is because what you're putting in your body is a bunch of shit that's blocking up the pathway to getting that thing healed. Mm -hmm. There's a direct correlation, right? If I'm putting fries and burgers and and Big Macs and and pizzas in my body to heal my bicep, that's not really going to do much for me. It really won't. No, it's not. Right, because there's nothing getting in there. There's no nutrients in it. Maybe a little protein, sure, but there's a lot more blocking that protein from getting in, as opposed to if I had a great balanced diet. Right, that's a huge thing when it comes to injury. See, that takes discipline alone. And too, and also right? the biggest thing with that is when you eat like shit, you're gonna feel like shit. When yeah. you're already injured, you're feeling like shit already. So how much more shit can you fucking deal with in your head? You're yeah. gonna, you're <laughs> right. That's where that's where the Dude. whole downturn. We see it over and over. I see. We it see it people here. Yeah, like, oh, I'm injured, and then holy, sh- you blew up, man. Like. Yeah, what happened? What happened? Like you, you, you could, last you summer, just, like shove pizzas. Last in year, I went on a Kiel's diet. I couldn't train at all. At one point, I trained for a little bit for just upper body, and then at one point, I I just said, okay, like things are starting to ache too much. So I actually chilled out for like three, four weeks, and man, I I did some major losing weight. You know what I did? And this is a secret I'm gonna give to you guys, and only the people who will find this 
valuable and he will ever practice this. It requires real discipline. I did a mental workout every single day. I'd wake up. I was at the contest at the time. And it was about half an hour to 40 minutes a day. I would sit there. And I would actually mentally visualize, just like Dorian Yates would, my workout for that day every day. So though I couldn't put weight on my actual shoulder, I would actually do the reps. One, I'd look like a madman. Some days I would just actually sit there and feel like I'm in the stands and flex and ready to go and actually, but I would finish that workout through and through every single day. And I did that for literally like six weeks at least. You're fucking nuts. Every day I would do it because you know why? Because that, that to me is like, listen, there's nothing stopping me from losing it. Like I can lose this muscle or I can't. Yeah, because yeah. your mind, because your mind, you have to remember your mind and your muscle doesn't know the difference. You're, if, if, if I took your bicep and I gave you three pounds today or five pounds, and if I gave you 50 pounds, that motherfucker don't have a number in his head. It doesn't know. It, it doesn't, doesn't know. know. Yeah. All it knows is time under tension and what you're attaching to it. I'm attaching something to this grip and to this lever, and I'm putting it under tension for this amount of time. So I did. I practiced the exact same thing in my mind. In my mind, I was picking up a 100-pound dumbbell, and I was pressing. Well, was you, pushing you're away. essentially doing the same thing as Dr. Joe at that point, right? Because exactly you're it. mentally you're well, that's going a, through. And every your body is yeah. moving. You're telling your yeah. body. Your mind is telling your body or, or giving you a pathway to movement. Yes, that, that's, that's, that's what it that's is. And I would actually like, okay, keep that pump. So what happened? What, what, what? I lost weight. I, 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 <laughs> yeah, because I, I went on a diet. Right, oh, I used the skills like, okay, diet, yeah, 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 and yeah. I actually lost, and it was fucking amazing. Really? Yeah, and That's I kept my pop. It was really cool. Dude, they should do a test on that. It was really cool. Right? Like people who ate healthy, yeah, right? a, a controlled amount of food, but then one person is training in the gym or whatever, and one person is like mentally going through it. That'd you, be very interesting. You, you, and, and there's there's not much of it because there's a lot of so that's a proven thing in triathletes these days, especially because some of them run into like competition, like like over a squeeze period of time, mm. they don't actually want to put their body through the pounding of what they do because they know I'm going to have to perform again in about 15, 20 days or whatever it is. So I can't do that same 30K plus a, you know, a run plus a, yeah. or plus a whatever, right? And the biggest thing with that is that they want to, they want to maintain their stride. They want to maintain so they visually just go th- or mentally just go through it over and over and over again. And they lose nothing in race day. If actually, there's, uh, there's, there's a book on that that I recently read. And they talk about that person. Oh, man. What was that book? When I get it, I will let you guys know. It's mm. huge. Because, oh, it was on the Tony Robbins podcast. It was, it was that lady. That girl. Yeah. And she yeah. said, she goes, because she was training so intensely, she knew that now before competition, she'd actually just dial down and just actually mentally focus on the... And she got better. She got better because her body was rested. She was at ease because she already put herself mentally in the competition state. Mm. Whereas people who come there, yeah, I physically trained, whatever. It's like, oh man. But you're like, there's like 5,000 people here. Yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. God, the yeah. weather's not what I planned it to be. She yeah. went through every scenario how weather could be that day. If it's raining, okay, this is how I'm going to do things. If I come up with an uphill and it's slippery, this is how I'm going to do things. If the water station's too packed, this is how I'm going to do things. She went through every fucking scenario in her head. Where that when she came through her marathons and her actual triathletes or, or, or triathlons, it was already done. I think this is a very important thing you actually done. just hit on because, like, when you're injured, all you can think about is, oh, woe is me, woe is me, yeah, all that stuff. But uh, I can imagine how powerful it could be if you're injured, but you're still thinking about training, you're still thinking about firing muscle. Mm-hmm. May, like, maybe you're not, you know, putting it under 100 pounds worth of stress. But in your mind, it's firing and just firing. Your body's moving with it. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a huge, um, you know, uh, thing that people should adopt or at least try. You have to keep I think your, be, that's powerful, man. You have to keep, listen, a lot of people, you know what they say? Like when people retire, oh, that's when they start actually weathering away. Mm. It's because one, their muscles aren't being stimulated. And two, their mind is not being stimulated. But there's a new wave of fitness coming around who are or new wave of retirees coming around. And they did just. Now is my time to focus on fitness. We see it out there. We every see day. it a lot. Now. We see it a lot now. It's awesome. And they're like, guess what? We're taking over. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. being here every day. I'm gonna do my rehab and whatever. Yeah. You know, and and it's and it's a great thing. So the the biggest thing when you get injured, you gotta keep yourself mentally stimulated and actually your muscles stimulated. Your body. Start one day at a time. If it's if if you can't currently walk, then you sit there and exercise. I would ask right? for a professional because everyone's injured I would in a different always, way. Yeah. 
everyone's different. So that's why we can't really say, oh, you should do this, this, yes. and this when you're injured because every injury is going to be a specific scenario. The, the biggest thing that we can say is when you get injured, uh, one is obviously get imaging of some sort. Your medical doctor is not the end of your line and is not your answer. Yes. Your medical doctor can, can, can pres- you know, refer you over for uh, examining such as um, – you know, any sort of uh, MRI, MRI, um, usually they will start their ultrasound x-rays. Well, they, they, they will usually start at and then an MRI if need be or a scan of some sco- some sort. Uh, and then after that, go. I would go see an actual paramedical practitioner. So such as a chiropractor, a, f- a massage therapist and or a physiotherapist because uh, they're the ones that will get that you know, muscle and state back into condition. Mm-hmm. Actually, an experienced one though. An the experienced one, because one. there's a lot of you know, you know, not not to hate on anybody, but there's a lot of practitioners who will take that and just kind of like ride it. If they hook you up for a machine to a machine and like and for, for 15 minutes, leave you in a room and come back and bill you, that's not a good place to be going. No. If they're using their hands on you and they're actually you know trying to see the range of motion, trying to see what you can and can't do, trying to see where your imbalances are, actually hands-on approach, then you're at a good start. Yes. Right? Uh, next is what is their plan f- for you? Let's hear the plan out. Mm-hmm. Plan from where you are now to the day that you're going to get back into doing your workouts, into doing your classes at 100%. This day you should be at 50%. You know, week 12 you should be at 80%. Week 10, you should be at 100% to go. Yeah, There should be a plan in place. That's a huge one. And they carry the plan every time they, they carry see the you. They don't it's just be like, just, oh, where am I? So uh, what are you working yeah, on today? Yeah, man. Don't, don't go to that. Don't go to that. And that's a red flag right there. And, you know, if, if there's nothing else, the biggest thing we can leave you with today is prehab. Prehab, prehab, prehab. We preach it all the time, which means take care of your stuff. If you're going to go hard, if you're going to go, um, you know, ape shit on the on the gym floor and lift weights and run and jump and do all this stuff prehabilitation is better than rehabilitation it costs a lot less time a lot less heartache and what we mean by that is take the time to stretch on a regular daily basis that means every muscle in your body Mm -hmm. if you're serious about training don't skip that part you know take the time to, to to loosen up um muscles such as uh, you know, doing mobility work, the joints, uh, or, or even smashing on a, on a foam roller or on a, me- not, not a medicine ball. Uh, what do you call that again? A lacrosse ball. Lacrosse that, ball yeah. that helps a lot. Golf ball. Golf ball. If you're that, <laughs> if, you, if you're into that, um, you know, and getting regular treatments from massage therapists, regular a chiro- so getting adjustments. Here's the important things. Okay. So number one, you would want a regular, this is what I always tell clientele and my own personal clientele for years. You want a person to take care of your alignment, so that's your chiro, whether it be through adjustment or through other modalities. They don't have to adjust you, but they're important to keep your alignment of your body. Number two, a massage therapist to keep you nice and loose and to keep those areas of your body that's going to naturally tighten up looser for function so that they can properly you know, um, uh, stretch and flex in the manner that they're supposed to. And finally, a physio to be able to, to create the mobility and the range of motion in your body that the human body is supposed to have. If you see one of those people at least every other week, once a month, right, I would do a combination of all three at least once a month just for general mm-hmm. maintenance, then you should be good to go. And you just got to do your own homework, right, and stay safe. And I think that's why it, what we have here is so powerful. And it's not even just to plug our shit. It's it's yeah. really like – because when we when we created this place, we wanted a place – that had everything and and trusted advisors yes, pretty much but we've never had that but we experience. never had it because we used to go uh, you know we had one we trained place, at one place we go, go to a massage yeah that's yeah. the thing it always was like oh i'm gonna see my massage therapist and but my chiro is somewhere else so, so and maybe my physical therapist is somewhere else so i'm gonna tell you something so when i was still working at the last company we were at i was um you know i would train there then i would see caesar at his old place yeah, yeah, on yeah. kennedy uh, for massage, then I was going to a chiropractor up by Liverpool and whatever, and and I was sending people all over the place too. So I was like, well, this is just senseless. Mm-hmm. They need to be able to connect, of course, at all times because like, it's your is, it's it's yeah. like it's like you don't go to a place just to get your tires done and then another place to change your yeah, oil. Because what are you then, gonna? Like, it doesn't make there's sense. a lot of broken <laughs> telephone there. Oh, my chiro said by the way. Oh, my RMT said by the way. No. and it was really frustrating. Yeah, that's why it's very it's essential. To have a full service facility that takes care of your body, who's there for your body, not you know, like who 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 is a touch point before 
you need to go through surgery yeah, or know, hospitals. And they know. They're they, your lifesaver before you need to serious yeah, and stuff. they communicate. And yeah. they know who your body. They know who you are. They know who, they know you who you are, you're they know capable your of. They, 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 they know. Your, tra- your trainer is essential on that too. Mm-hmm. Whether it's a group exercise trainer or a personal trainer. Yeah, they the know. They see. The aspect. communication is there. They can see what you can and can't do. Yes. And the important thing is now you have trusted advisors. Be like, yo, Christian. Can I talk to you for a second? Like, I'm, I'm feeling aches and pain here a bit more, or I'm feeling weakness on my one side a bit more. Can we take a look at that? Because yeah. I, I don't feel right. And that's powerful. Again, I think you're, yeah, you're going huge. to the, in the same place you're at, you could have advisors and then implement that right away in the same place, yes. like in the next day or the week after. Um, and yeah, man, that's unbeatable. If, if, and it's a special situation that that's why we're going to expand out to every fucking where because we everybody needs this but if you can find a, a group like that those are essential people that you yes. need in your life especially yes. if you're training often you know if not even as a high level athlete if you just like training you're going to push yourself a bit and with that comes you know sometimes imbalances sometimes tightness yeah yes um, and sometimes you need the, the that that <coughs> guidance and support that one touch from a, a experienced person but like hey Dude, you got to stop training for what, like, like maybe a week. We got to take care of this right now. Yes. Right. And, and you know, I, and and a huge part of uh, coming out of an injury when you do come out of it and you're back to, you know, functioning before or whatever, you come back even stronger. You really Absolutely. do. You come back stronger and you approach things a lot smarter. That's, yeah, that's the thing. That's you, the become you become with smarter with your movements. You're not with your going about yes. stupid things anymore. Now, there's a smart. That there's a difference between the intelligence of things and hesitation. You have mm-hmm. to address the hesitation part because uh, just to touch base on very quickly, uh, yes, it's true after an injury, a lot of people will become mentally hesitant about about Absolutely. doing yeah. the same move or something similar to again yep. and that is a mental block. Address the fact that that is a mental block and you have to get over that. Well, what comes with that it is doing your rehab though. It right? is, it is. Because it's that having that confidence. to become confident. It's a confidence. Maybe you're lifting five pounds and yep. you know, just to hold. Yeah. You know, for a week or two, yeah. and then you get to curl a little bit more. Yeah. But then as your body does that, again, like you said, confidence starts to build. Confidence. That's the reason why you have to work on your rehab stuff all the time. It's not a one, like a one time thing. Oh, I'm going to see Christian once a month. No, mm-hmm. you have to do it on your own. When on they give regular, you exercises, your yourself, yes. corrective exercises on your own, you have to do that stuff, man. You know, and a final thing, a tip for, for, for people who are listening to this. Injuries happen usually um, during two times. One is during through the warm up or just as you're warming up, or two is when you're exhausted and tired and you're cooling down, uh, and that also translates into an exercise. So a lot of people will pull their back in a deadlift mm. because they'll pull from the ground, but their very first rep they kind of just pull whatever. Yeah. And then their very last rep, instead of dropping it down with perfect form, they'll kind of just flop over. It's like oh my god, something went. Mm-hmm. So just a word to the wise here. When you're going to get up to lift something, have your body set. When I say set, that means core is tight. That means your glutes are pulled in. That means your muscle is a strong, your body is a strong structure enough to lift whatever it is that you're asking for it to lift. Mm -hmm. When you're going to do a movement such as a jump, it's the same thing. You have to set your body up. If you're just going to flop around and do it, expect to get injured, right? So you have to be mentally aware of your body when you're lifting, when you're doing things. Because here's the thing. When you're working out, what we always preach is, you got to be mentally in tune to your body, yeah. your movement, your muscle, your, your breathing. If you're checked out and you're thinking about dinner or the friggin' or man, I got to hop on the 401 after and get home, you're done. So that's a big thing. You got to be mentally there. And especially during those two ports, parts of your lift, the beginning, the end, or the beginning of, of your workout, when you're still not warmed up or at the end of your workout, when you're most exhausted, those are very, very high times or high risk times of injury. So just be aware of that. Um, and if you got something out of today, we'd actually like to hear from people. I'd personally like to hear from you guys uh, for any injuries that you may have. I'd like to be able to to, to cover them on, on this podcast. Sure, yeah. So whether it be knee, back injury, uh, any form of car accident, whatever it is, we'd like to cover it. Yeah, and we'd like great. to bring in a practitioner to also speak about it with us. That way we can give you some real tips and some real life, you know, um, valuable things to take away and to actually apply but we can't do that if it's just a generalized item such as today. So if, if there are people who have any particular injuries or aches or sores that they want to address, please get at us. Uh, you can hit us up at strengthenu at sign, S-T-R-E-N-G-T-H-N-U. Hit us up on Instagram or check us on our website, contact forms there. All right. Thank you for listening. Please refer us to other people. Yeah, thank you for listening, man. Until the next time. All right. Thank All right you. Cheers.